time of travel, time that's going is also proportional to v. And average speed times time is just as covered. Okay, we're going to average 5 feet per second. We're going to do it for 0.31 seconds. So we're multiplying those together. We have two things that are each proportional to v. The time it's going and the speed, average speed it's going at. And we're multiplying them together to get distance. Average speed times time is distance covered. All right? And so that's why the height it bounds is proportional to v squared. We have two things. We have our average speed. So we have v average. V av times time equals distance. And our v average, our v average is v over 2. And our time equals, what was it, v over a. So v over 2. And then we have v over a. So we get v squared over 2a. So like I said, it's proportional to v squared. A is a constant. It's one of those trivia. And this is also where you get the 1 half at squared. Because we can substitute at in for v right here. So if I substitute at in for v, I get a squared t squared over 2a. One of my a's, one of that a cancels out that a. And I get at squared over 2. And then you get a constant of 4. And you solve that one. Okay? So there we're getting the y, the height of the wall bounds is proportional to v squared. Okay? So let me erase much of this now and get back to what I was saying. I have a question about the time. Is that just the time that it goes up? Yeah, it's just the time it's going up. Okay. It's just the time going up. So I guess the question is, if it was total time, you'd have to double it. Yeah, you'd have to double it. That's right. It's just the time it's going up, or alternately, it's just the time it's coming down. Whichever.
subatomic level, little subatomic particles hitting each other and bouncing off, we can pretty darn close. We can perfectly last the collisions. But we're not going to be worried about those.